protein be for a fuck up? Help our, help our mind. Uh, taking all the knowledge uh, and love well from you that I feel good. Read this right now. Jesus, amen. 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 <laughs> Uh, we're in uh, James James 1 what you guys remember uh, James 1 119 119 I knew that I didn't I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't know when we started this that we'd pretty much we'd be camping out in, in James 119 for a month but that's just where God has it it's just some you know James is the practical gospel that's where the, the, the meat potatoes Christianity is you know and uh, that's where we can really put our our faith to the test and say, or our our actions and our thoughts to the test and say, do these line up with uh, with the with the thoughts and the actions of a Christian? That's I think why James is such a excellent book, and there's just for such a short book, it sure is packed with a lot of nuggets. Verse 119, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen. We covered that, right? We listen to the word of God, right? Uh, slow to speak, right? Slow to speak out the things of God that we're, um, if we're going to profane God's word by speaking mistruths or improperly um, preaching God's word, um, and we should be slow to become angry. And that's where we want to focus on today. Um, this kind of anger, you know, well, so quick and slow, right? Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become anger. It's not the rapidity or the speed or the lack of speed that we engage in these, these behaviors. Uh, rather, it's the attitude to, and the disposition. You, is it, are you guys aware what a disposition is? A disposition is like a like a character or a personality trait. Um, some people who are always angry, you'd say he has a spirit of anger. Lowercase s, but he has a spirit of anger, or he has a spirit of pride, or there is a spirit of revelry in the place, or the spirit of joy. And these are attitudes or dispositions. And so when we're talking about uh, quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to become angry. We're talking about what our natural personality is, what we are prone to. Uh, uh, it's uh, you know the character, our, our attitudes, basically that govern our actions. And these are, like I said, these are these are rooted into our personality. Of course, we become new creations, and. Uh, our personalities still have to be sanctified. Uh, if if you were fat when you got saved, you're fat when you're born again, right? You just you have to get sanctified. If you had an attitude problem with everybody you came across before you were saved, you're still going to work through that attitude until that sanctifies God sanctifies that out of you. Um, okay, a little bit of Greek here. Slow to become angry. In the Greek, there were two uh, common uh, words for anger. One was orge, and that was kind of a, a settled, kind of a persistent, kind of strong um, disposition, disposition of active anger, right? We've all known this, especially some, we've all, some of us have had this. Especially those of us who are maybe alcoholics, or those of us who were raised in a, a violent uh, lifestyle, or those of us who were in prison. We know we know people or are, are in jail who just had that strong, persistent air of of anger. Right? That's orge. It's like a burbling, right underneath. Think, picture picture Mount St. Helens. Is that, has everybody heard of Mount St. Helens? Some of you guys maybe. What's a volcano in in there's other volcanoes around the world. There's, anyways, there's the one in Pompeii. There's the Kilimanjaro. There's, I know there's a volcano in Mexico. There's one. Well, there's one brewing. In, that is that is Orge. Whatever's going on underneath your, uh, Yellowstone is, is Orge. It's, 
Um, it's the it's the it's the it's the difference between uh, what is going on underneath the surface and what erupts to the surface. And so thumos is that eruption. So in and I believe it was 1980 or 1981. Um, the rumblings, uh, Mount St. Helens had an orge underneath it that was just um, simmering. And then when it erupted, that was thumos, right? And that's not, that, that's not the kind of anger that, that James is saying to be slow to. James is saying that because we are new creations and because it's, uh, it's not for the man or the woman of God to have this sort of personality trait, this quality, um, that this is the one that we should be we should be slow to um, succumb to this sort of uh, character flaw, this fleshy kind of uh, behavior pattern. <coughs> so orge is the lava brewing beneath, and the third the thumos is the eruption. Um, and of course, the orge. What, what's burbling underneath, what's boiling underneath the surface um, tends to boil over at some point. It does tend to erupt. Right? I don't know if anybody's had any failed attempts to use a pressure cooker. <laughs> um, or you put something in the microwave and, you know, it wasn't vented and it blew the lid off or a burrito. Right? We've all blown the hole out of a... <laughs> I mean, it's the same, just, just to get that image in your head. <laughs> you know, when, when James tells us that we're to be slow to anger, there's a general sense and then there's a specific sense. And in the general sense, he says, in, um, are you guys familiar with the love chapter, right? First Corinthians chapter 13. Love is patient. Love, love is, is kind. Love is patient. And that's exactly first Corinthians chapter four or verse four. And, and this is what love is patient love is kind and a person who is not being patient with somebody is 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 displaying you know there if you're if you're slow to anger then you're going to be patient with somebody if you're slow to anger you're going to be kind to something to somebody it also says that um you're uh, not easily angered right jesse go ahead and find that read out four and five please first corinthians four and five 13 four and five Go ahead. Go ahead, OG. Okay. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It sure. always protects, always trusts. Always perseveres. Always perseveres. Love never fails. Love never fails. And that is a person who is slow to anger. They're slow to let their attitude be one of anger. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. <clears throat> but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, goodness, self-control right so this this these are the character traits of everyone in us today because we are christian men and women we have the spirit of god in us right amen these are the things that love is now in a specific sense being slow to anger um you know we are to become angry or we are to be slow to become angry at the, what the Word of God teaches, right? Listen, in verse 18, he says, He chose us to give us birth through the Word of Truth that we might be a kind of first fruits, right? Through the Word of Truth. And so we know that one of the subjects of this topic right now is the Word of Truth, right? We're to be quick to listen to what? The Word of Truth. <coughs> and so... Um, you know, think back to the word of truth. You know, lost people hate doctrines of God. They hurt, they hate, they get angry at the doctrines of God. They get angry at the doctrine of, let's see where I at here. Oh, here's one. 
and I'm going to I'm going to point something out to you guys. The the same doctrine that unbelievers get angry at are the same doctrines that those who call themselves Christians or even you know newly born Christians who haven't quite matured yet the same doctrines they that they get angry at as well. We have the the, the, the Christian doctrine that all are bad, right? Some oh people are inherently good. No they're not. Romans 3.10 all, No one is good, it says. There's no one who seeks after righteousness. They have all turned away. Oh, this is good. I mean, this is what the Bible has to say about people. This is uh, in Romans chapter uh, uh, chapter 3, uh, Paul is quoting from Psalms um, starting at verse 10. It says, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Right? Lost people hate that. So do, so do a lot of modern evangelicals today. They hate the teaching and the biblical truth that all people are, are you know, without God are bad. Jesus says, you can't do nothing without me. Outside of, apart from me, you can do nothing. People hate the teaching about hell. Right? A loving God would never send anyone to hell. Well, what's Jesus say about it? Well, let's see here. Oh, so look, Revelations, Revelations, chapter 21, verse 8. Let's go ahead, Jesse. Revelation 21, 8. Sorry, I was busy. 21, 8 says. But as for the cowardly, the faith, faithless, the detestable, as for the murderers, the sexually immoral, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be taken in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. And you know why people hate this teaching, right? Because there, and any any one of us, every one of us can identify with being cowardly, or unbelieving, or vile. Right, or a murderer. Jesus says, if you uh, hate, uh, if you have hate in your heart, or if you're angry with the brother, you're, you're you've committed murder in your heart. The sexually immoral. Um, almost everyone you come across has in the well, in the flesh. Everyone is sexually immoral, right? I mean, we've all had that impure thought against you know another woman. And Jesus says, if you've even looked upon a woman with lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. People hate that teaching. People hate hate the standard of God because we know we can't we can't uphold to it. You know we can't you know we we don't measure to God's standard. And the problem is is that it takes a lot for us to realize that Christ met the standard. You know we don't have to. Uh, now it's good practice, but we don't want to continue to practice these sins because the devil will eat our lunch and pop the bag. Um, but Christ is the one who fulfilled these standards. We follow Christ. That's grace. But people don't want to be accountable for their own actions. It says you'll be consigned to the fiery lake. That's just that's all there is to it for eternity. There's only two places. It's either heaven. I, 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 set, to, I set heaven to record against you this day that I lay before you life and death, therefore choose life, that you and your family may live, because there's only two options. If life is one option, there can only be another option, and that's death. They hate that, they hate that teaching. Um, people really hate the teaching that Jesus is the only way. Boy, you Christians think you're, you're so arrogant. You guys think you know everything. Jesus is the only way. Well, what about Buddha? What about the Hindu? What about 
the Muslims. What about, well, uh, I'm not religious, but I'm spiritual. You guys ever heard that one? Probably even if some of you have repeated that before. I've repeated it. I'm, I'm spiritual. Never having been spiritual, it just sounded like a really groovy thing to say. <laughs> John 14, 6. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through me. Before. Acts. There is no other God by Jesus, isn't it? Jesus is the Father. Jesus. There is no other, like you say right now. Right, and that's that angers people that you would have the audacity, Manny, to believe that Jesus is the only way. Like it's our doctrine. Like we're the ones who said this is the way. We're just going to go ahead and come up with this out of our own imaginations, and you have to follow it. And, you know, and again, it's accountability. People don't want to be accountable to the truth because then they would have to admit that their actions are wrong. That's what Jesus says in John chapter 3. You know, people refuse to come into the light because their evil, their actions were evil. They love the darkness. Um, nobody likes being told what they're doing is wrong. They uh, People right now really hate the teachings on homosexuality. Right? And here again, we have in 1 Corinthians, uh, uh, Miguel, can you read 1 Corinthians? Uh, 6, 9. Sodomy, I guess I can say that here. Uh, sodomy, in its purest uh, definition of the word, word, is anal sex. That's sodomy. But but in, in its negative context, is forcible sodomy, rape. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah, the town of Sodom? That was a sexual act named after that town because of the homosexual acts that the men committed there. But it, it's the men of Sodom were forcibly... Their, their thing was not just homosexual activity, but forcible homosexual activity. There's a there's way more underneath what was going on in Sodom that's than just homosexual activity. It was worse than that, even if you can imagine. Yes. So I have a question. So you know how there's like churches that are homosexual, like you know what I mean. So do they just skip this part? Oh yeah. They, or, or how does that work? Do they just like? Oh, it's okay, you know what I mean? And then Look, they kind of just skip over that page. When Have you ever lied to yourself? Oh, yeah. The, right. It is against the law of God, isn't it? Huh? It is. Yes, it is it against is. the law of God. There's so, two churches right down here on 7th and... Because I know a church, another pastor, I, that I... He, he's sitting with a man and all that, and, and he is the one is preaching to everybody, and everybody in that church is, is like that. So... Yeah. Oh, they think they're right. They know. they do think they're right, but when we we're really good at justifying our own actions, or we just ignore, or we just say, Don't even say it doesn't apply to us today. Um, there's a, there's a guy who wrote a, a, a book recently, Matthew Vines, that uh, has does a really good job. If you want to be deceived. He does a really good job of explaining away the verses about homosexuality. There's the Queen James Bible that a lot of our, a, a lot of uh, a lot of them are going by now, which rewrite or omit uh, verses about homosexuality. The um, Queen there's a, James. There's a, yeah, there's a there's a really um, complicated and intricate deception woven into that into that falsifying that doctrine. Um, it's deception at its purest level. It's the devil. Disguised, disguised as God's goodness. Disguised as God's love. Um, people hate the, uh, you know. Again, this is these, this is a list, and we've all been guilty of. You know, right after that, Paul says, "As such were some of you, but you have been washed, you have been sanctified, you have been justified." So, we have a desire not to not to engage in these behaviors anymore. 
Sometimes we do. Sometimes it takes us a while for God to get into our head and say, you know what, God? I know you really don't want me doing that. And we, we change our behaviors. You know, born again doesn't mean perfect instantly. It means perfect instantly in the spirit. But for our, our behaviors and our attitudes, it takes sanctification. Um, marriage. You know, the divorce rate in the church is the same as it is outside of the church. 51% right now. People hate the fact that either one, there can't be same-sex marriage, right? But in Genesis 2.24, God said, Therefore a man will leave his, his father and mother and, and cleave unto his wife, and the two will be one flesh. He sets the standard at the very, in the very second chapter of everything that is written in the Bible that marriage is between a man and a woman. Christians, look, I married a couple, and they're not, they're not together anymore because this, this woman's mother got into her head, and um, there's this, this battle. They were living together, and um, anyways, they, they um, well, uh, their mom says, my mom said that we should, uh, we should live together first. These are church-going People were professing to be, you know, holy, you know, church people, and they were uh, they were advising their daughter to live together first to see if you can handle being married. So, uh, I mean, th this is the Christian mentality on marriage, and you guys are going to see. Oh, th you guys are going to see this a lot. Um, well, you know, we just. And then they insert, insert this excuse or they insert that excuse when really you want what you want and that's all there is to it. And it can, is there a lot of confidence in a person who professes to be a man of God or a woman of God and moves in with, a, with somebody else and they're shacked up? That's just, people hate that teaching. They get angry and they're at the, at the word of truth. That is supposed to be what has saved them in the first place. Anyways. Repentance is another teaching that people hate. Um, people think that just because they say the name Jesus and they, they uttered a prayer um, that, that they should be saved and they should be able to they continue to do whatever they want throughout the week. I heard the saying, I like it. Sunday morning saints, Monday morning ain'ts. Right? Right, Sunday, we're all holy and righteous and religious and by Monday morning we're, you know, yes. So uh, I, I just have a question. Um, so how would you call for someone that just like has a normal day and stuff like that? They're casually going on and stuff in their life and stuff. But, uh, but they, they are constantly resisting without actually like uh, thinking about it. You know, it just happens naturally. Is there, is there a reason behind that? Or? Somebody who naturally begins to believe in Jesus? Believes in Jesus and resists the temptation that happens like naturally and stuff like that. Because so, I would say like if they're constantly on the attack, and stuff, you know, a lot of it's stops it going in, but it's not. It's the thoughts of being captive and the temptation is like, but it's like natural. But I don't know. It's like, it's like, it's like, is that just maturity or? Um, you know Romans one and two. And I don't know if you remember uh, a few months ago we were talking about uh, our conscience, right? And Romans 2.14 says that the Gentiles that uh, uh, by, by nature do what the God's law requires shows that they have God's law written on their hearts and on their minds. And their, their thoughts sometimes accusing them or defending them. So every one of us has a uh, the built-in knowledge and that's the word conscience means con is two parts, right? It's Latin, con is with, same as in Spanish. And science, knowledge. So with knowledge, everyone's born with knowledge, with knowledge that God has given us. So there are those, <laughs> it was never me, unfortunately, that are just, have moral values and they're able to live by them. But then again, I don't know if it's just the product of their environment. I know that I, I was raised in a very corrupt, sexualized, violent, bitter, unforgiving, alcoholic and drug addicted, you know, environment. And I wasn't trained how to be a good 
just to be a, a decent person. But I've known people, um, I've known guys who I just for for years I just thought it was normal just to be a womanizer. I thought it was normal to just be a sexual deviant. And and I met this one guy some years back, and he wasn't like me. He wasn't gay, but he just wasn't a sexual pervert, and I couldn't understand that. But that's that's God's conscience at work in people. Uh, and they need Jesus just as bad as the next guy. Um, another another teaching that people get angry at is that uh, you know this is not based on our works. This is not based on our performance, right? People, we want to be able to point our finger at the next guy and say, I'm better than him, right? Think of the Pharisee and the sinner praying in the temple. And the Pharisee says, pounds his chest and says, looks up to heaven and says, thank God that I'm not like other men, like this sinner over here. <laughs> and then the, the sinner, he just, he can't even raise his head and he just... Lord, forgive me, a sinner, right? Um, we love to be able to say, look at what I did. Hey, can I get one of the, uh, the brothers in Spanish to read uh, Ephesians 2, 8, 9? Quiere que uno de ustedes lean Ephesians? Which numbers again? Ephesians chapter 2, 8, 9. Yeah. Probably took some of my medicine. <laughs> it's antibiotics. Suckers. <laughs> Remember, we're on the. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. I know. I'm gonna have to stop it. <laughs> Sorry. God's going to watch this later. Jesus <laughs> gave us a chance to go with him, even though, I know all of us here, everybody, God's going to 